All right, welcome back. A new ministry with a lot of labor queries happening now. There's uh, about two strikes that have been announced in the last few weeks. We are talking about all that, plus the questions you've been asking online to Dr. Alfred Mutua. But first, the history informs the future. Let's take a look at a little bit of our history. We take you back nine years to the date today, and that was the headline. Details of ICC evidence uh, Ruto then did not want used was our headline at that time. And uh, there's Pastor Nganga from the pulpit to the dock also splashed on that day. And uh, then elected president uh, Nkurunzinza was sworn in for a controversial third term. Now, Nkurunzinza is now late, but this is history. Back on the same date to the month, but different year, nine years ago. All right. Back now to our discussion in studio. And thank you so much, Dr. Ali, for finding time to come tonight. Asante, son. I'm very happy to be here. Bari Masiku. Niko Sawa, you know, you're the first CS who's coming <laughs> on my set after the new dispensation, the ah, broad-based yes, yes, yes. government. Yes, and yes, you always yes. honor our invites. Thank you, thank How you. How has it been in the last few days for you? New ministry, new experience. First question from social media. Kenyans feel that everyone who came back, including you, in President William Ruto's government was rejected and don't deserve a position. Do you think you're sitting pretty tonight? Yeah, but, but who rejected you? I mean, who rejected? I mean, people are against the finance bill. They're not against the rejection of individuals who are working different, different, different things. So I don't understand who rejected who. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, the president decided to rearrange his government and uh, return the people he felt were well fitting to his agenda at this particular time and uh, were lucky enough to be returned and to continue working for him why do you call it don't you think you have to be there why is it luck that you no, are it's, there? It's, it's, it's not necessarily luck yes. it is luck in the sense that uh, you feel uh, privileged because out of 50 million kenyans uh you've got a cabinet of only 22 people and you're right and there and you're, the you're one of them so mm. i mean you can't just say it's just because of you you know what i mean you have to be humble enough to know that uh, the hand of God, uh, opportunities and abilities. So you can't be the best in the world. There are people there out there who can be better ministers than I can. There are people who can be better uh, leaders than uh, most of us. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But uh, the hand of fate or God or where you are that time, you, you have to know that it's not just, you're not that, that important, that it's just you. That and you, you, you feel must like, have been there. You feel that, uh, yeah, it, it's an honor. Yeah. You know, it's a privilege okay. to be able to serve the people of Kenya. Let me explain this to you. One of the demands from uh, the James E at that time, and one of the demands from Kenyans at that time, aside from reject the finance bill, was dissolve the cabinet, right? And the president took the cue and dissolved the cabinet. Yes, yes. And then he chose eight of you to come back um, from the old cabinet to the broad-based government. Now the question is, the fact that the president took that decision was an indictment to that cabinet. And you're right there. One well, it's, it's, let, let's take, let, give you an example that you know very well. If you say that a football team is not functioning very well, and you find that the, the spectators are saying, well, we don't like this football team. You know, the fans are saying, let's dissolve this team. Uh, do you kick out all the players? coach and everybody and start anew with a new team you don't do that you rearrange the team you get rid of some you bring others you reposition others in different places and you move on that's how you rework a team okay uh, reworking a team doesn't mean that you've got a football team that you and you're not happy that they're not scoring enough goals so you get rid of all of them and you start anew with a new band that you don't even know how they play how they mesh together uh, you know, and then that, that will lead you to disaster. It's like management anywhere. Even an organization like this, uh, you know, standard group. If they say they'll be an organization, that mean that uh, yourself, the directors, everybody goes home. No. You remove some, you leave some, you rearrange, you bring new blood, you reorganize, and then you move on. That's how management works. I mean, that's the reality of life. The people who think this is political patronage. I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, uh, we're in a country whereby we are a democracy. A democracy means you go to the vote and you vote in for the person that you like. And if that person doesn't win, you support the one who wins or you, you, you stomach the one who wins until the next democratic election. You know what I mean? And that's how it works. So it's not just about patronage. It's about the system that we have chosen. We went through a very difficult system in the uh, time in this country, fighting from a uh, one-party state to be a multi-party democracy. You know? And it helped us. And it has helped people like myself. Let me give you an example. 
when I served in Machakos, I joined politics uh, after being government spokesperson in the party of Waipa. All of a sudden, a Waipa started uh, fighting me. They were threatened by the kind of development that I was bringing and the things that I was doing. So they were going to sideline me. I could see the, the writing on the wall, as the saying goes. So because we're in a multi-party democracy, I was able to form my own party, Mandeleo Chap Chap, and actually trounce Waipa uh, in the next elections and continue on my term. second term as yeah. governor of Machakos. Because of that spirit of multi-party democracy that says that we have a right to choose okay yeah all that you have said have reminded me of one of the questions that you faced during vetting you have been approved you're the cabinet secretary but mm. i want to take you back to some of those questions there were difficult questions in that most of or some of the members of parliament who brought your previous performance yes. questioned the very essence of the president dissolving his cabinet because one of them asked you what is it that Alfred Mutua began and succeeded? They brought the issue of the road, the um, beautification of Nairobi. They brought in a lot of issues. So that still questions this. That well, does that, Alfred feel that he's qualified for this position? Well, let me tell you, let me tell you one thing. No, I'll tell you one thing. If I wasn't good enough, I would not be where I am today. If I wasn't up to something, I would not be where I am today. I'm not here by flukes. I'm not here by luck. Somebody else will be sitting where I'm sitting. So don't just look at a person and think that they are just there because of patronage or just because somebody favors them. You're not favored. You have to add value, my friend. If you're not adding any value, then you're not there. Out of 50 million Kenyans, why some of us? Because you add value. And because there's something that you can do uh, slightly better maybe than other people, you know, in the same circumstances. So uh we are not here by flukes my friend okay yeah one of the things that i always looked forward to um when you were governor was to visit yes. the machakos people's park something yes. you did perfectly one of the questions that came out is uh, the promise you made in the first time and i'm glad to say and i've seen tonight <laughs> one of my bosses also here and he's the one who sent me to machakos when you were launching the ambulance ah, yes 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 and that was also a big thing then but what happened to <laughs> the dream of dubai that was one of the questions. Well, and you never delivered and that. that the, in no, no, I, I, what do you mean I never delivered? I, don't have I, it. I delivered a lot of things, it. but yeah. the reality of the matter is you have to understand why was it delivered. And therein is why the Gen Z's were on the streets. Because we come from a political system in our country of, uh, I don't call it diminishing returns, but of senseless uh, uh, leadership by some people. We brought in good concepts, good ideas that are people bringing in every day. Then, uh, people went to court to stop it as stop they the do idea. to stop the idea because it was not benefiting to them mm -hmm. because it was going to highlight other people and make them better so they are thinking about themselves because their children have jobs their wives have cars their homes have swimming pool we are thinking i'm sitting in my chakos i'm thinking about what will happen in 10 years time how do we progress this this program to where we're supposed to be but they're not thinking that way and that is the difference between good leaders and horrible leaders and if you look at the continent of africa you ask yourself why is it that the continent of africa has the largest deposit of minerals in the world we have the largest uh, collection of labor in terms of people are able to work we have the natural resources you know the rivers and the lakes and we can have you know a lot of uh, you know electricity you know uh, climate protected and clean you know, we can do so much we can actually feed the world but why do we starve no, why is it, it that we are fed mm -hmm. you know and i'm talking about the african continent i'm not talking about kenya because we have maybe it's a cultural maybe it's uh, hang-ups of uh, colonial imperialism maybe it is uh, our education system but we have hang-ups that slow us down when it comes to really moving people towards development and what, where what politics be? becomes uh political games become more important than the livelihood of people and retaining our people into poverty becomes more important than lifting them up in one of the challenges that william Bruto has had is is because he has come out and played less politics and more development and said and you know uh, i listened to him in cabinet i listened to him when i talked to him president william Bruto is talking about tells us all the time we can't leave kenya where we found it we can't have people talking about kenya 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 comparing with the stories of south korea another 10 years why can't we get there he has that commitment yes he's very committed to that and we're very committed to that you know what i mean but people don't understand people tend to be slightly afraid of change that brings massive development 
to our people. And why is there that is so? this because culture? Think and and I think you, good. yeah, but you, that's what we think. But look at the players in the in the garden. and the players in the field are representative of the people in the village. Nobody puts an elected leader into office. It's a person voting. So where are we as a people? That's what we're talking about. Let's engage in civic education. Maybe it's time for us to to realize that uh, we may have big ideas and where our people are. We need to go back and take our people with us to the big ideas. You know what I mean? It's like the story of Moses telling people, we need to go. We are going to the promised land. You know? And we are going to Canada. And behind. their people want to remain behind because they are more comfortable behind and they are afraid of the changes that come with massive development. And changes they don't know about. They don't, they, know they about. don't believe they in They have it. their comfort zone. Yes. And, uh, and then the others take advantage of the situation and feel like, ah, we can actually position ourselves better by agitating. So, you in know, essence, and, that is uh, what happened in Machakos County. That's what happened in Machakos Do County. Do you think that's that is a promise with the, with Because you have an opportunity. And all you yeah. sit in the cabinet. It, it is, think yes. this is a reality, not only in Machakos, yeah. but elsewhere in this country. Do you Let think? me tell you one thing. Eh? When I worked for Mwai Kibaki as a government spokesperson, I remember Ambassador Francis Mudaura, we sat down and we were talking about how do we improve our arid areas, for example. And we thought, very simple concepts. You go to an arid area, let's say, uh, let's take Northeastern, for example, that has really been marginalized for so many years. You say, okay, let's choose a place on the highway. Dig a bowl, build a school, put solar panels for power, if the grid is not there. Uh, dig a dam build a housing estate, build a clinic, uh, build uh, an agricultural center where food is stored. Do all those things that you need to do. Build a street of, uh, of whatever, of, of, uh, of shops. We costed it less than maybe 100 million uh, per town. Once you do that, what will happen? The people will stop living out there in the world and suffering. They'll come and live closer to the town where they can access healthcare. Why they can go happen? to the chief. The they can go to all this. Yeah. You know, start, it's all about economics because could we be able to afford it? And we are growing this economy. Those are the ideas we had when we were swimming and flying with 7.1% uh, economic growth. What happened? Post-election violence. We went back from 7.1 to negative digits of economic growth. All those ideas, you put them in the shelf. You can't afford to do them. We, we have all these things that we seem to have movement in the African continent. You start. You are going. You are well placed. You have uh, taken off. We use the uh, example of uh, flying. You are just about to start cruising. You know what I mean? Then you come down again. Does that not mean It happened to earlier Moi, it happened to Moi Kibaki, even Jomo Kenyatta, it also happened to, uh, you know, Uhuru Kenyatta. It, I mean, it's, it's our story, and it's, it's, it's very continental. It's, you let them start, they're doing a good thing, something is found within the system, either in influence from outside or inside. What does, that say? what does that say? It says a lot about, about us our planning, as yeah. not even us as our people. Why do we start if everything is not set? then we stop in the middle. No, it's not planned and it's not set. It's that you've set everything and you're moving, then it is destroyed. How comes that move of destroying it was not anticipated? That's yeah, a question. Yeah, but you see, you can't... Because you, you they can't say we are reactive people. Let we me, react. Let me ask you, let me tell you something. It is like, you have children. We have children. You have a child, the child goes to school every day. You have a system where you know the child is picked up in the morning by a yellow bus, he's taken to school. Then disruption comes in, somebody destroys the bus. You, are not, you, don't, you cannot anticipate the destruction of the bus. Whereby now, you start having another bus spare on the side. You anticipate that things will flow as they do in the Americans, with the Americans, as they do in Europe, as they do in other parts in Brazil. Then suddenly you, you realize know what I mean? it's not flowing. And then you realize expected. it's not flowing because there are people who are so caught up with destruction of ideas for self-fulfillment than others. The president tells us all the time uh, in cabinet and even outside cabinet about corruption. He tells us clearly, you know, that mamamboga in the village there is depending on the tax money that is collected. You cannot start eating that money for that mamamboga and expect that mamamboga to still stand with us when you go for elections. And so he's very strict when he, ta he talks about, you know, all, all those spheres, you know. And, and I see the desperation at times in our president, you know. I, I see the desperation because 
I, I look at him at times and I just smile because I understand him. I see the fire burning in his belly because I was a governor, you know, and I've had that fire burning in my belly. And I was able to achieve the things I achieved in Machakos, which have progressed to put me where I am today because I'm not here because uh, of luck. It's because I worked in Machakos. I did my work as government governor. spokesman. So it's a build-up. So I see his frustration because he wants to get this achieved in a country whereby um, maybe not everybody is aligned to what he wants achieved. And not only that, we are not where we are economically to be able to realize our dream in terms of the challenge that we are facing. But he's not giving up. But I, he's the I, president. I, I love, At the end of the day, he's, he, the he's the president. He's the pre but I mean, he's, he's there's got, nothing that can he's, stop he's got, the president from doing what he wants with no, it. It's right to decision. No, no, it, you, it can because, you know, you do the right decision, the courts stop you. He's a Democrat, you're doing the right decision. Uh, the Gen Z's come to the streets. You, are, you feel you're doing the right decision, you know what I mean? And, and, and all this. So I look at what happened, the demonstrations, as uh, a very good thing. Because it has helped President William Ruto restart, rejig. There's been a slowdown, but it allows him to reorganize himself. You know what I mean? For the bigger fight. And the bigger fight he has here is a fight against poverty, is a fight against lethargy, is a fight against bureaucracy that can be done away with. It's, it's, you refocus Kidogo and you move on. So that's a positive thing that has happened. I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about uh, uh, what the president has, is doing because you're right uh, in it. But I'd like to know, you're one of the cabinet secretaries that have moved. This is the third yes, time. You, yes, begin yes. From foreign, you began from foreign affairs, you went to tourism, now you're right there. I mean, why have you been moved? so much it's because i'm like a midfielder is that uh, the reason yeah it's a reasoning i'm a midfielder you know it's it's if you organize yourself even management and you've got that one person where you know you need something sorted out that person will sort it out for you and i hold conversations with the president and he's very clear about the mandate of things that he wants me to do because he knows i can go there fix things get them the same trajectory and i can work anywhere you know there are people who can only work maybe in one or two I can work basically in any ministry and still perform at a very high caliber. When you were the, the minister, when, when you were the CS for foreign affairs, yes. there were decisions that were made that were reversed immediately. Musale and Mudavadi took up. Yes, yes, yes. yes. What does that say? Because you say you're the man, you can work you know, anywhere. Those, 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 but those, to those, but those decisions were cabinet decisions, or not my decisions. They were cabinet decisions were that cabinet were reversed decisions. immediately. Yeah, but know. he reversed it also with a cabinet decision. So we were working together. You know, this government doesn't just operate on individuals just making their decisions. Work on the collective good of decision making. And I worked very well in foreign affairs. Mm -hmm. And actually the president told me the other day, it's because of, uh, you know, and I know, talking, it's, it's because of the work we did in foreign affairs. Understanding the bilateral trade agreements. Understanding the labor market. Understanding the work we traveled with him all over that what needs to be done in terms of this labor, that's why I'm in labor. Because I don't need lessons. Yeah. I already know from the experience I acquired in foreign affairs. I know what needs to be done. I don't need to learn the system. I understand the system. Can you, can you veto a cabinet decision? Because do you think this made you look bad? Because when you left, that is the time with Salia Mudavidi yes. came in and that decision was reversed. So probably someone said this was uh, Alfred Mutua's uh, policy that did not work. And for us to reverse it, we had to get him out of that ministry. No, no, no. But it, it worked. You see, let me tell you, you, there's no policy that you can make that is unpopular that cannot be reversed at any time. But, and we've, we've changed many policies as we go along. You start a policy, and that was not just my policy. It is our policy. It was a policy that was made. And the policy we debated and said, okay, it's a good policy. It was good for Kenya. Let's, let's work on it. For mm. Kenya. And it worked for Kenya. You know, Did look it? at Yeah, it worked for Kenya. Look, look, look at, for example, let me use the example of the American ambassador. The American ambassador has been one of the key supporters of our country as a country because she has had the access of talking to cabinet ministers and others through that formula. A lot of these ambassadors are still working with us. And people misunderstood because people have a clawback. People claw back of that change. The change I was talking to you about of the systems when people just are afraid of getting out of that box, you know, and it served its time, set aside, it still works as far as I'm concerned very well because even as myself as a minister, I'm still meeting ambassadors who call me directly and come and see me. 
we are still getting appointment meetings. I want to come to see us directly without having to go directly uh, through the foreign affairs. It's happening. We set up a culture whereby you could accelerate development. You know, where somebody wants to come and help you, you go dig a ball, you go help a children's home. You know, they don't need to write letters that take 10 years, you know, or six months to go through the system. They call you, you organize, foreign affairs is informed, and it continues. That's one of them. Tourism, the issue of uh, foreigners will plant trees also. Yes, yes, that's yes. How practical? No, it's very practical. It's even Does it work? It's working in Chile, yes. And We're the talking planting about of trees, that's what I'm saying. You, yes. you also have to have a bigger mind than just seeing a tree and a tourist planting a tree. It was about people coming here to acknowledge what we are doing. And actually, it was very well acclaimed. And actually, there's a country that is about to, to, to take it up, and it's still continuing. You come in, and you're asked when you come in at the table, would you want to contribute to Kenya planting 15 billion trees? You say, oh, it's a good idea. The same way you go somewhere and they ask you, do you want to put your loose change in this box? Or do you want to leave, add $2 to support a children's home? You know, you say, yes, I like to plant a tree. You say, okay, uh, to plant a tree, you can pay $10 or $5 and we'll plant the tree for you. But if you want to participate in planting a tree, Physically. we've got a place where you can plant a tree. And mm. people love it. And people contribute. And, and people students. contributed? Yes. How, how much did they contribute time? at that time? People contribute amounts to where they are able to participate in the hotels and the tourist sector are out there themselves engaged. How much so was it's, contributed? It's about, I don't have the figures of how much was. It was not about contribution of people contributing for a fund. Mm -hmm. It is the participation where people say, yes, I'm willing to commit to what Kenya is doing for the rest of the world, for humanity. And they're able to say, yes, uh, I can contribute, and it's not a force. Do you want to contribute? Do you want to plant a tree? Yes, I'll plant a tree. Oh, that's good. I don't have time to plant a tree. Can Let me I leave my $10? Yeah. my $10, somebody will plant the tree for me. Okay. You know what I mean? And then that is done. This was your idea. It's a brilliant idea. Yes. I yes. have traveled the world. You live with change from another country. You drop it at the airport. Yes. It was your idea. Did you not think of how this money would be accounted for and how much... You left the ministry without knowing how much money no, no, had been no, no, collected no. See, through this, this venture. Is, this because otherwise, Daktari, we believe you meant physical planting of the tree. You come in, I give you a seedling. But you see, also people are being given seedlings, and the hotels are still doing it. If you go to... You partner uh, with the you, hotels? Yeah, the this? hotel, yeah, it is. We talk to the sector. The sector thought it's a brilliant idea. The sector is still doing it. People go and they're told, Kenya, we're planting trees. You're going to the Masai Mara. Do you want to plant a tree? And now it's become a habit. Okay. If you go to a lot of these hotels, you go on holiday, people are planting trees. And so we are trying to be that target of 50 billion. People feel that they are participating. They are participating in that country to do something mm -hmm. in that country that works for them. We know, now I've just determined that we don't know how much was collected. We don't keep those accounts. But how many trees were planted? The trees were not the, the physical Let me one. tell you one thing, my yes. friend. Eh? The money was not collected for money to be put somewhere. Okay. It was an initiative whereby the hotels and the people in the entertain in the in the hospitality industry would also be at the forefront saying, Do you want to plant a tree? Yes, you want to plant a tree. If you don't physically it's five dollars and then they would the hotels themselves would by themselves be able to plant the trees and undertake that so it activity. Was not central. No, it was not centralized. You but this you question was you cannot right centralize. From the you cannot centralize that system. Mm -hmm. You know, but, but we are smarter than we look. You know, this was giving Kenyans an opportunity where we say, plant a tree. If you are a student at school, if somebody says, do you want to plant a tree? I can bring you trees. You brought trees. You plant a tree. So we are saying, even tourists when they come here, let them also plant trees. So it, and it is ongoing. So it works. You, it, it you works said it, it is ongoing. It was is this ongoing. question asked right from the airport? No, you asked when you're checking into when the hotel. When you're checking yeah. into the hotel. That yes. explains it. That's so from the hotel, hotel, you choose what to you do. You choose what to so do. So the hotel becomes accountable for the money. The hotel becomes accountable for people who want to plant trees, yeah. And the hotels <laughs> for do for the money or for the people? For the people who want to plant the trees. Because okay. the hotel says, do you want to plant a tree? Yes. Somebody says, and the hotels are accountable. You know, you can't just imagine that just because you, you would swindle that money, that the hotels would also do the same. It is not in their interest to swindle the money. But how are they accountable? This was your idea. How does it mean they are accountable to the to the person mm -hmm. who comes in and leaves the money and leaves the money? So if I say the I don't have time to plant and I'm leaving the country right now, yes. how will I know my ten dollars was used to plant? You this check tree? with the hotel. 
You call back the hotel. You check Does the it hotel. happen? Yes, After you do call back people your check, hotel. People, and people, people have say, oh, I don't feel like planting a tree. Yeah. I don't like leaving money. You mm. go to uh, a place. Go, it's a choice. A it's free a choice. choice. A choice. Okay. Yeah. okay. So that's how it was done. Yeah. All right. Um, I want to go into the labor issues now. Yes. There's a lot of uh, issues that have come up. And straight, once you're confirmed, you start dealing with uh, uh, people working at the airport. Right? And you manage to convince them not to hold the strike. But however, there are many strikes that are coming up. How comes you are unable to help sort out what's happening in the education sector? Because they are saying that uh, they only dealt with one issue. They are going to strike on Monday. You promised during your vetting that you want to nip this in the bud. You don't want to wait for it. You don't want to start negotiating on the street. You want to start in the boardroom. How comes this is going to happen? See, the Minister for Labor is an arbitrator. You are a middle person. You don't take sides. You know, you don't take sides with the government. You don't take sides with the uh, with uh, the union. You don't take sides with any employer, be they in the private sector. You're an arbitrator. Mm -hmm. You're supposed to bring them together and sort the problems. What I said is this: when before we go on strike, we need to get a culture that says that the strike, a strike, should be the last resort, and it's about how people treat each other. When the people from uh, uh, the union from aviation came to me, and I called him, I told him, you're putting this strike. Why don't, we, why don't we first explore all other avenues before you go on strike? And they thought that's sensible. Let's, let's discuss. Nat came to me, and I called him. I said, why don't we uh, look at all avenues before we go on strike? Go on strike. Mm -hmm. Before I could get Coupet, you know, and they agreed before I could coup it, coup it had already put a notice of, of a strike. And by that time, I also talked to Teacher Service Commission, Minister of Education. I told them, as a Minister of Labor, it is important. You do the right thing. Sit down with your, you know, with your clients. Sit down with the employees and work this out. And I'm in there. They're still talking to me. When the uh, Aviation in, uh, Union went and saw the minister, I arranged a meeting. They saw the minister, they had a long day, they agreed on many things. In the evening, the aviation called me, they were very unhappy. They said, we are not treated right about this. So I was like, uh, the school teacher, uh, the headmaster. Be, they were not treated very well about this. I mm -hmm. called the minister, minister says, no, oh, but you know what I mean? I called them again and I said, no, uh, can we do it this way? And I got them together again because the, this, the problem has to be sorted by them. It's not sorted by me, it's sorted mm -hmm. by them. My job is to facilitate and to ensure it happens. And so we want to lead from the front as the Minister of Labor to say that when we sense there's something going wrong somewhere, we don't wait for it to fester. We don't wait for it to become a big wound when it was just a small pimple. We call the parties to order and tell them, to Meskia Fununu, can you go sort it out so that it doesn't become a big thing. And I've realized a lot of these problems are basically communication. People feel that they are not being listened to. People feel that they are not, you know what I mean? And also, I was able to talk to the unions and tell them, even as you debate, even as you ask for more money, let's look at the economy and where we are. Let's look at other ways of dealing with this problem. Yes, you may demand this. Is it affordable? And if it's affordable, how can it be done better? So I give them options also for them when they go to be able to ask for their rights in a way that also makes sense. And I talk to the government uh, units and I tell them, these people are demanding this. Can you give them some options? So I bring in what you call as uh, a voice of reason. It works at times, at times it doesn't work because the unions have their own rights. To, and if they're not feeling they're treated properly, they use the strike as a, as a leverage to, to get their way. But my, my point is, I saw quite a number of strikes in Machakos. So I became an expert in dealing with strikes, you know? And you deal with strikes by listening. And you do it early. You try to stop the strike early. Or you handle the matter of the strike early. And there's always a solution. Because even after a strike, mm -hmm. people still sit down and agree. Okay. And at times what they agree on, they could have agreed on without the strike. What is the solution for the teachers that is in the offing right now? Because Monday, schools are opening. Yes. And they're saying, without meeting all the demands, we are going on strike. I don't want to speak on behalf of the Ministry of Education. As I said, I'm an arbitrator here. Um, all I know is that the Ministry of Education, Teacher Service Commission, are seized on the issue. The President has come out very clearly and expressed his opinion. He has said, get your act together, Ministry of Education, 
treasury, talk to uh, our friends and talk to them. I have spoken to COPET, uh, the, you know, the leaders of COPET. I've spoken to leaders of all these organizations. I've told them to listen, ball, listen, give them a chance. I've told them also, listen, give them a chance. Because you can't have people chest stamping from both sides. If you chest stamp, it's Kenyans who are getting hurt. We, yeah, we, we don't move. So uh, they, they had meetings today. Yeah. I have not been briefed officially uh, on what they discussed. Yes. And, uh, and you see what happens is that when they go and talk, I don't interfere. I'm not there, Mark Timing, looking at what they're doing. You handle your problems. You know, because I need to position myself in a place whereby I can be seen as fair to both parties. The so government the, and the workers on strike. Yes, I have to be fair. Both the government has to see me as fair. The strike unions, uh, unions who want to go on strike have to see me as fair. Okay. They can't be seen to be supporting the government side or supporting the union side. I need to be fair. So I can't interfere on the day-to-day -day negotiations, but I, 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 I oversight, you know, to make sure that things are not going... Haywire. Having said that, don't you think then you would have promised too much? Because your idea of nipping strikes in the bud is moot right you now. Seem, you seem to take everything and turn it into a negativity, my friend. No, I'm not, I'm not no, turning. No, I'm no, asking you, you because you should, be looking, you should be looking at the positive element of it. You can't succeed every time, but you can't stop doing things because you're afraid that they will not work. You can't turn everything that I do into a negativity, my friend. I have to ask. That's why you... Yeah, you're asking, but you can ask without turning into a negativity. You <laughs> but know you have I mean? to be accountable. How you can, is this negative? Can, let me ask you questions. Yeah, I was yeah, a journalist. I can ask you. Yes, let me how is this you negative? Things. But you know how to do I'm not the one asking you questions. You're not the one asking yeah, questions. Yeah, but I can teach you I'll give you another opportunity. So ask us so that we can enlighten the viewers, not try to I need to, because there are so many questions here that they're asking me and saying, do you know, does Dr. Mutua know that there will be no teachers on Monday yes. as a labor minister. Yes, yes. So what is he doing about it? Yes. How is that negative if I ask it? No, that's not negative. That's yes. not the, what you asked before. Yeah. You know, no, 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 I just but asked, by, don't by, you think you have a problem? My, my friend, I'm not as stupid. You know, and <laughs> I, I, can, I, can say that. I can tell you interesting words. things. Yes. And anyway, let me tell you one thing. You know, I've been in this game for a long time. I was a government spokesperson. Yeah. I'm a journalist trained with a PhD in communications. Mm -hmm. I know when you're twisting things and trying to plant, oh, so to put a seed. <laughs> a plant. It's called planting a negative seed in the in the in the. That's right. I just need to answer this. So, people. so we, I'm I'm quite concerned yes. about students uh, not being in class, and I hope and we're going to work today, tomorrow, uh, following day. I'll be following up to see and find a way of uh, sorting this issue. Mm -hmm. But it is still between the Ministry of Education, our Treasury, finding some and the funds, unions. and the unions, you know. And I'm waiting. Teacher Service Commission, I had a conversation with them. They told me, I told them, if you feel you're getting to a wall and you need me to intervene, please let me know. I'm waiting for them. Because you can also intervene too early and ruin it. You know what I mean? Because even when you're negotiating with people on strike, eh, you also have to have leverage on both sides. You know, they, they are... They're all, I'm twisting each other. So I don't want to interfere, yeah. Ali, but I am as concerned as you are, as all our parents are concerned in this country, that we don't want our children staying at home and not going to school. On the principle of collective responsibility, yes. I am asking this question. You are here representing the cabinet. Yes. The Ministry of Education mm -hmm. is not here. One of the issues that we are grappling with in this country right now is finances. Yes. We don't even have a framework for collecting money. We don't even have money. One, from the finance bill alone, close to 8 billion shillings is out that could have hired JSS teachers. One of the imperative, non-reducible, irreducible minimum rather, is you have to employ in um, permanent and pensionable terms. We don't have the money. We are here as a government telling them we will find a solution. Where are we getting the money to find a solution? Because there's ground standing in this, Dr. Now, I hope the union uh, leaders are listening to you. Because you've laid it out clearly. They know. Yeah. But you're you you, saying you, there will be a solution. You, you I want that solution. Laid, there's yes. a solution. The solution is uh, coming together of minds. You know, live in Kenya. And they're not...
You can't get everything now, but we can phase it over a period of time so that over a period of time you're able to get what you want because they know in the reality. If we had gone through with the finance bill, as you aptly put it very cleverly, we would not be where we are today. Mm -hmm. You know, it would have been automatic. That we will employ JSS they teachers. They would have been employed now. Mm -hmm. They would not have been that we will employ, we would have been employed them. That's a reality. And so we are living with the birth pains of what we just went through. Okay. And that's a reality. And it's going to, it's going to uh, come back on us several times. You know, it's going to hurt us quite a bit. You know, it's going to come back on us several times. Not only this issue, many issues, issues of healthcare. Okay. We're going to be talking about um, a treatment of people with cancer. We're going to be talking about uh, people who have debilitating diseases who cannot access healthcare because they're sick. And we are going to go back and say, oh, we had set up a system whereby it did not matter where you came from, it didn't matter your tribe, it didn't matter how much money you had in your pocket, that if you got uh, cancer, you got a disease that was very expensive, that we're going to pay for you 100%, we're going to take care of you. This was already factored in the finance bill. You, to a kata, okay. to a candle, you know what I mean? So there are so many things that will come up as we continue this year, where people, including the Gen Z's, will say, oh, what about my program? What about this uh, uh, education program? What about my employment program? What about this? And we'll say, oh, that was in the finance bill. It is not there. It can happen. You know, I, 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 so, but, but because uh, the spirit of our president is that, yes, uh, you close one door, you know, Bob Mali, Bob Mali, you know, uh, said that, uh, you know, you don't give up. You know, mm -hmm. you close one door, another door is open. My question is, uh, Daktari, the problem in the Ministry of Education has faced that for a long time. You just mentioned cancer treatment, which was one of the big things. And uh, I am alive to the fact that uh, we have had so many teachers strike in the last, I don't know how many, yeah. how many years. So there's just so much that we, 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 we are dealing with right now. So um, what happens? It's okay. What happens, Daktari? This time round, how do we ensure with collective responsibility that the teacher's issue is sorted once and for all in this country? Well, I don't think it will ever be sorted once and for all. Mm. I think because we, have, uh, we are a poor economy, whereby uh, the demand for the cash that we have is limited in terms of uh, the demand is higher than the supply. We are going to face this problem until we get to a place whereby we stabilize as an economy. I personally don't think that our teachers are paid enough. I don't think that uh, our teachers get what they deserve in terms of the pay. When you think about what a teacher does to prepare you sitting here and to prepare me sitting here. Yeah. You know what I mean? If it was not for my teachers who taught me in primary school, secondary school, throughout my university, I would not be where I am. So I think that our economy where it is right now cannot afford to pay teachers what they deserve. What we need to do is set up a system whereby there is predictability whereby people know that after a certain period of time, we are going to move to this place, we are going to move to this place. And so we are, we are, we are still going through, and I think God has given me an opportunity in the Ministry of Labor to start thinking of techniques and ways of forcefully looking at issues and seeing how we can sort them out five to seven years from now. Because some of these problems that we are facing now started 10 years ago, 12 years ago. And so there's been an accumulation. So we need to start planning 5, 10, 15 years from today. What we put down as structures that will hold for us 12 years ago, 12 years uh, to uh, from today. Yeah. The issue of uh, how much Kenyans are being paid, because that's one of the issues that has come up, the issue of minimum wage, this squarely falls in your docket. Yes. How do we monitor? How do we ensure from where you sit, that the people who deserve the minimum wage that is always given at uh, May Day, during May Day, right, is actually implemented. How do you plan to work on that? That's a very good question. It's something that I've always worried about. Um, we haven't had a pay raise for several years. And uh, during the last Labor Day, the president promised a 6% pay increase uh, for our workers. I have documents sitting on my table right now uh, that I need to gazette to allow for this uh, pay raise of 6% to continue. And uh, when I look at the gazette notice that I've been looking at, it has bans saying that house helps in Mombasa, in Nairobi, in Machakos, in Kitale will be earning this much according to where you are. 
and uh, security guards will be earning this much, and metal workers will be earning this much, and all that. So that is where it is. Now, the issue of enforcement of uh, those rules come back to empowerment of the worker. The worker has to have a mechanism, and that's what I'm looking at, grappling with, mm -hmm. has to have a mechanism of calling out and saying, I'm not getting the minimum wage. When I studied in the US, we, we had uh, these jobs that we did, and the minimum wage. You worked in the computer lab, you knew that there was a minimum wage. If you worked at a, at a store, uh, what was selling uh, clothes, you were working at a minimum wage. So you knew that was a set minimum wage that you couldn't change according to the law, and that was set. So I hope that we can be able to get there. But also a conversation with the uh, employers, because employers also have to have the enough resources to be able to employ our people and pay them at those rates. Yeah. Because you can also raise, increase uh, the pay raise for workers and drive businesses out of town or get them to stop working in a way that uh, they don't expand and create more jobs. Yeah. So it's a balancing act. So I'm talking to Kotu, I'm talking to Federation of uh, Employers to come to a place so that we know we can enforce it and it is good for all sectors because it's about productivity. Workers have to feel Henry Ford, let me give you an example as I give this point. Henry Ford said that he would pay. Henry Ford is a, the, the gentleman who came up with a combustion engine and made the Ford cars. He said he would pay his workers enough money such that they would be able to afford the cars that they were making. That mentality. So it's about productivity. We have to pay our people and create an enabling environment for them to increase their productivity. Because it's when you increase your productivity that the employer benefits and is able to expand, make more money, open new businesses, and employ more people. So it's a balancing act. But also, you can't have pay so much that the employer feels that the productivity is, uh, or what you're paying, it doesn't equal what he's getting, mm. or what he or she is getting at the end of the day. So it's, it's, uh, it's a mechanism that, you have, but it's something I'm grappling with. Has it ever worked that what is usually announced is actually implemented yeah it and has. what is the monitoring yes. mechanism for it has this? over the years it has how, how do you monitor and ensure that well, i'm paying my i think there's one housekeeper there's one percentage. prefect who does it a very good job called atoli over the years atoli has been very well spoken and court have been very well spoken and i've called people to order in terms of all these things if it was not working if what was given by daniel arap moi in 1990 or no in 19 you know 88 was not working today, I mean, we would have known about it. It works. It works. We may not feel it. It works progressively, and things have changed over time, but it will work. And I'm going to ensure within my own system and within uh, with the support of cabinet mm -hmm. and the government, uh, the president, that we are going to initiate a process where we enforce it. But you see, it's better when it doesn't have to be enforced. It's better when the employer feels yes. I can do this. Through your conviction. It is the right thing. Yes. Not conviction because mm. they can see the end result, the increase in productivity, the good working conditions for their workers, the growth in the economy. You know what I mean? Okay. They, all the benefits that they are getting out of it, then it becomes a win-win situation. We have a few minutes and I have to talk about what you talked about today to Kenyans, yes. the employment agencies and how they have been reaping Kenyans. Yes. This is uh, a big thing in this country. It's happening all over the place and we have a lot of people losing money because of the employment agencies. How do you intend to tackle this? Because closing these agencies, looking for the registered ones and unregistered ones, has not worked. I'm sure the cabinet sectors before you tried and failed. I am sure there's a reason why it's been failing. From where you approach it, one, what informed today's decision? And secondly, how do you intend you as the cabinet secretary to ensure that this time we're not going to talk about this with the next cabinet secretary because it's failed over the years you know what what i did today has not been done before no cabinet secretary has called all these uh, agencies and said let's sit together and have a heart to heart talk i wasn't talking to them we were holding a conversation and i asked them i said we're in this game together you want to make money i want to get a uh, maximum number of people that we can get overseas with jobs as I sit here, according to my database, I've got 466,000 jobs available for Kenyans. 466,000. Locally or internationally? Internationally. Available okay. for Kenyans in 20 countries. 
and I asked them, why aren't we able to fill these 466,000 jobs? And they explained to me. They said, somebody said, I have an order of uh, 1,000 jobs. I can only fill 50. Because the process, the bureaucracy of going through to get one person to travel, the amount of time it takes to train them, the documentation I need to do is taking too long. And people gave examples. They said, what takes a week in Uganda what takes a week in Ethiopia is taking three months in Kenya. So they were able to give me feedback, and we agreed. They talked about the licenses they're given. You give me uh, a license for one year. Before one year, I've not even settled. I have to renew the license. So we agreed. We need to extend the period of the license. I talked to them about rogue agents, and they also admitted they are rogue agents mm -hmm. who take people's money, who send people's money. And we agreed to disagree on an issue that I'm going to put my foot, foot forward, foot down, and this is it. When an employment agency gets an order to employ from a manufacturer or from a company, they are given money or they are told we'll pay you so much money. When they go to get that villager, when they go to get that young man or young woman, they shouldn't be asking that young man or woman for any money. They should take that money from whatever money they are making I don't know if you're with me, Ken. I am, I am. So we agreed to disagree today, and I said we'll revisit this matter. Because if you're making, let's say, for example, you, you are, you're being paid, uh, let's say, for example, you're being paid, for an example, they used today, $1,100, let's say 130,000 shillings. Mm -hmm. You're making 130,000 shillings per person. But processing them is expensive. So you have to, their ticket is 65,000, uh, passport for them is 10,000. Medical is 12,000. Uh, going to uh, classes is that. So you find that after all this, you're spending 100,000 to get this person ready. So your profit is less than 30,000 because you still have operations. So you're making 15,000 per person. And you ask yourself, is it worth it? So I told them, let's me look at the system, see what we can do here to increase your profit margin, stop all this bureaucracy, so that you can have a slightly larger profit margin, which will motivate you now to fill the jobs. So that you can be able to fill these jobs and also be able to survive, because this is also their livelihood. So it's a balancing act. You know what I mean? So somebody said today, I have on my desk, I can take 3,000 Kenyans today for jobs, but I only take 50. I can only afford that's to take the, 50. That's the capacity. They that's the capacity I can hold, because of all these requirements and all these things. Mm. So as a government, we're coming in to say, we cannot continue doing things the way we've been doing things a long time ago. I sat down with National Employment Authority. I visited the offices yesterday. I toured. I was surprised that I was the first cabinet sector to go and sit with them in the offices and tour and look at how they work. I'll be visiting all these offices. That's because I'm very hands-on, you know? You understand where the problems are. I went through, I saw some of the crooked things people do. For example, uh, on yes. the first visit, yeah, you so notice they are crooked. No, no, not, 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 not an employment agency. Okay. But even, even the agency agents and others. For example, yeah. you give the name of a young girl who is supposed to have gone through a course. And you say this young girl has gone through this course so they can get a travel permit so that they, they can go and work. Mm -hmm. They have gone through induction here in the country. When they check on the system, where they went to the induction, or you here? Zero. No, make a jinaki apple. So now we're here. So we're going to take a course. We're going to take three months later. You know, so when you call, call. You know, when you call, people want people bring fake documents. We're going to be from four. We're going to be from six. At we're going to be from some university. We're going to be from ata wacha ata some university. Ata kuingia university ya kitembea kwenda across kwenda kunua chia across the road. Aku pitia na umemwe kapo fake documents. So I had a hard to hard to convince and told them we help each other. To achieve and call. Now, Sisi, to correct some things. They complained about some of the processes, some of the people, some of the things that are bottlenecks. Because when you've got a lot of bureaucracy, it opens way for bribery corruption. and corruption. Yeah. Because mtu anakwambia, it takes six months to process. But uh, we can work on it on two, two months. You know, Give us something. Tukutani nyuma building. You know mm. what I mean? So why can't we uh, shorten it? And I promise them that my target is a month okay. for registration. You should be able to register 
you apply for a license and you get it to the how many do we have right now that are registered we have uh, as today when i looked at the numbers as of yesterday were 570 570 registered registered but we have got very many mm -hmm. who are not registered who are conning kenyans okay who are stealing from kenyans so i'm going to have i'm going to initiate a drive very soon kwambia wa kenya this is kia wewe unasema ati umedanganywa na agency because we shall have provided enough information because mm -hmm. we will have posted the agencies that are recognized okay ukienda kwa agency ya kona hapa ikubebe 200,000, 50,000 kusabu unataka shortcut na tamaa upotezi pesa yako you have that to blame okay. so as a government we are going to do proper public participation telling people these 570, these 600 are the ones we can hold liable they are the ones who have put in a bond of 1.5 uh, billion a million sorry 1.5 million shillings mm. which means that if somebody dies overseas we can now take that uh, bond which and i need to and bring them back that's a, that's but if you start working with people mm -hmm. who we don't know about agencies who are questionable mm -hmm. mtu anakufa ngambo unasema agency ametoroka we can't find the agency atumjui it was not a licensed agency alikuwa a kwok ni kama kwenda kwa kwok doctor you know unakohoa kidogo na kuambia nafikiri uko na shida ya mguu you know what i mean so, <laughs> eh, <nunakohua. laughs> you know, you know. so people also have to learn that we have to do things properly okay. and so i'm going to empower kenyans so that even as a parent when your daughter comes home and says this agency has told me to pay so much money to take me to this year take me here you can the parent check. can go and cross check if it's a the parent registered. can call and we can tell that agency we don't know it avoid it okay. it is fake okay so many questions but we don't have time I'd like to come back to you to close because we've spoken about so much. I see a lot of Kenyans talking about this, but majority of the concerns about the strikes that are likely to affect the majority of Kenyans. But even as uh, you wait for an opportunity to close the show for us, let's do our video of the week. And this week we are not really looking at the video, but uh, as we end the show, we'd like to bring this to your attention. Businessman Jimmy Wanjigi is a man of many faces and some years ago no one could have believed or could have seen the picture of him turning out to be who he is today now this week he got his badge of struggle he openly displayed his handcuffs in court lifting his hand in a show of defiance as he waited for his case to be adjudicated like many politicians from the mountain region wanjigi understands that uh, the voters from the mountain demand for something back before they give you back themselves. Now Anjigi seems to be on this path to show that he stands for something. He has taken the war on prudent use of resources personally demanding for accountability from the government. He speaks against the government of the day and this week he challenged the president to a political contest. Tonight we will close the show with these pictures of Jimmy Wanjigi. If the question is are they sufficient for him or for his audience tonight? A good place to end the show, but not before we give a closing remark to Dr. Alfred Mutua. You are in a new ministry. You deal with a lot of Kenyans. The labor force is huge. What is that one thing that you didn't say during your vetting that you'd like to tell Kenyans, especially who are looking at you, um, trusted you with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, the Ministry of Tourism, are now the labor ministry what are you telling them and i know you know cameras yes and, uh, i think our kenyans need to know that uh, the same alfred mutua that was very successful as a government spokesperson very successful as a governor is also going to be very successful as a minister because every portfolio i go in i go in a hundred percent i don't give 20 percent i don't give manus manus i work hard because i've got a bigger picture of where kenya needs to be and uh, I'm looking forward to being able to serve our people in this country, to make this country great, as our, place, as our president said, to take this country where it was supposed to be. We don't have to be poor. We don't have to be struggling. We don't have to be suffering. We can get to that place. But it is, you, you, have, you cannot say that you want to eat without having to go to the shamba and dig. But I can assure Kenyans, regardless of what you hear, Kenyans are amazing people. I came up with Najivunia Kwam Kenya because we are an amazing country with amazing spirit. We are one people and we are going to go through many hurdles 
but you're going to get to the uh, promised land that we know will get there economically. So in a nutshell, Mbele eco sour. Do you know Kenyans check the performance of government officials real time nowadays? Yes. We How do you do feel it. about that? That whatever you do is in scrutiny, is put on the microscope every step of the way. It's, it's a you're driving thing. on the road now, they're checking you. How are yeah. you driving? If you're harassing us with your cruisers, whatever you say is checked real time. Does that make your work easier or more difficult? No, it's okay. It's, it's about Not accountability. Not you, but as a no, government. As government. I think it's a sense of accountability. It's a sense of accountability and also humility. You know, you need to be humble. Uh, we have to remember as leaders that we have been given a task to do. You've not been made a mkubwa, you know. I, one of the things I don't like is being called mwashimiwa. I, I just don't like it, you know. Why, why konini niwe mwashimiwa kuliku watu wengine? Mama yangu is more mwashimiwa than I am. You know what I mean? Because she bore me. You know, she brought me up. She's, she's more important than I am. Mm -hmm. So this sense of people getting into power and feeling that they're very important should not be there. We are servants. Our job is to serve the people of Kenya. We've been given an opportunity at this time in history to make this place better than we have found it and much better than people expect it to be. And that's our challenge. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Alfred Mutua, for coming and sharing with us tonight. At least we know what to ask you next time you appear in studio because Thank you. we are looking You're at looking Kenyans real time and, and social keep, media. Keep, 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 keep score. And every word that keep you score. said, yes. you know they are saving them. Yes, <laughs> keep score. No, it's good because it, it keeps us in our lens. Okay. Bele Ikosawa and see you next time. And as we end, tomorrow is Thursday. My colleague Ashley Mazuri will be right here. And uh, tomorrow night, she will be speaking to the APK uh, party leader, Eugene Wamalwa. A lot to ask from Eugene Wamalwa tomorrow. Azimio One Kenya Coalition seems to be crumbling. You know, you don't do politics. I would have asked your question, but it, it looks... In fact, I need to ask. No, we okay, you need to give me that one minute to ask you this question. Yeah. Rigeti Geshago, the deputy president, said that when he comes to the cabinet and sees... Mbadi sitting that side and says uh, um, all these other people who came in, who are on the position sitting, how does it make you feel when you see people who are on the other side sitting with you in the same cabinet? Just in a few seconds. I, I'm, I'm happy. Because let me tell you one thing. Eh? If in a country you decide it's us against them, you'll never get anywhere. But if you decide that we can pull our resources together, regardless of uh, where you come from, mm -hmm. you're there. I was in Azimio. I'm not in Kenya Kwanza. You know what I mean? So it works for you? It, it works for everybody. There's because no cabinet. You have to be bigger yes. than just this. Everywhere. Look, look. I mean, I lived in Australia for some time. And I saw it happen in Australia all the time. Whereby the opposition would join government. And part of the government would leave government and go into opposition. Mm -hmm. It happens in democracies. It happens in the UK also. You know? Okay. Where coalitions come in and you move in. Because it's about getting the right team. Like I give you the example of a football team. We, we need getting to the right players yes. uh, to... Do you think the, the president goal. got it right this time round? I think he got it right. Okay. Yeah. My name is Ken right. Mijung. On behalf of the whole team, thank you so much for watching tonight. As I said, Ashley Mazuri will be hosting Eugene Wamala tomorrow. A lot to talk about in politics. He's no longer a politician, but Azimio seems to be crumbling. In fact, ODM has taken its own space, and the rest of the partners have taken their own space. In fact, they're mooting. They want to form their own party. So stick around for that conversation tomorrow. And Meresha Witi was with us earlier on sign language. Have a good night. We get another opportunity to do it again. And thank you, Alfred Mutua, for coming tonight. First CS. I've really enjoyed it. Yeah. First CS, broad-based government. Asante <laughs> sana. <laughs> Thank you Dugyango. Asante. Karibu.